Okay, here's another fun one for you guys. Um, this is just a little pivot minnow. Um, and all it is is just a, a little B10S stinger hook with a, with a shank off the back with very few materials. So we fished this uh, for the past year or so and it's just a kind of a utility fly. Um, quick, quick to tie, good action in the water and uh, you know, just basic, which is sometimes good. So um, for the tail, we just got some marabou on the shank. It's just some of that finesse chenille. And then for the hook, same thing, finesse chenille. And then for the peck fins, just a couple little, uh, little tufts of marabou, totally optional. And the head is just lasered up and trimmed. So um, this video is gonna be a lot of the chenille wrapping, so I might fast forward through, you know, quite a bit of it. But um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple and gets the job done. Um, what's cool about it is it's just one hook and a lot of times the, the small mouth will just inhale these flies and sometimes I prefer to just have one hook because of that. Like if you fish some of the two, you know, the two hooked flies, um, it can be a real pain to get those out of their mouth and it does some damage to their, to their mouth and whatnot. Um, so sometimes the single hooked bugs are a little easier to work with and easier on the fish. So and they're just fun to tie and fun to fish. So, um, so we're going to start with our shank. And again, this is a 25 millimeter shank and our thread is 50 denier gel spun, but you can use hundred, 200 if you want. Um, or you can just use a uni thread. Doesn't, the thread doesn't really matter so much on this fly just because you're not torquing on anything. You're not spinning any deer hair. So whatever you got available should work fine. So we'll start with our little tail and that's going to be just a little piece of uh, marabou. Um, and you can, you know, another thing with this fly is you can change the colors up. Obviously you could do this in white with an olive head, white with brown head, gray would be good. Um, but we're going to stick with yellow for now. And you can just pick any marabou piece. Um, this is just the strong marabou, but I should be using the, the woolly bugger marabou because those things are a little, little shorter, a lot fluffier. They're really good for tails. That's, that's the, the main use of that woolly bugger marabou is for little, you know, stout, stiff tails on woolly buggers. This stuff is made for like palmering, but either one works fine. So, so we'll just get one feather out of here. Um, this one looks good. And we can just sort of check the tips on this one. So that could, yeah, that'll work fine. So this is gonna be sort of our tail, just a little clump of it. And we'll just lash this right to the back and should be, I don't know, about the same length as the shank, maybe a little shorter. Um, you can just hold it on top and lash it down. This is a simple fly, so. And then you can cover this if you want, or you can cut it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, gone. Smooth all this out. Okay. So the rest of the shank is just gonna be this finesse chenille. Um, and this is the medium size. So, as you can probably guess, just tie it in, and then go all the way to the front and then just palmer this all the way. Nice and close, nice and tight. I'm trying to form like a solid body here. Call that good. Catch it. Okay, that's in. Do our whip finish. Always do two. Okay, that's in. Thread gone. Chenille gone. Um, if you want to put some head cement on there, you obviously feel free. Um, but that's good, that's done. That's the back half. So moving on to our hook. And this hook for this pattern is a B10S size two. Um, you can tie this bigger, smaller. Um, but just as long as the shank 
is kind of you know proportional to the body, about the same length as the body. So, so for a size two, we're going to use a, a 25 mil shank. So go ahead and just do a, a base on this one. Okay, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Nice and easy. Tag. Gone. And then for the juncture wire, you can use, you know, intruder wire, beetle on, braid, mono, you know, 1x tippet if you want. Since there's no hook back there, uh, it doesn't really matter. So it's just something to allow that shank to swing freely. You can use whatever you want. You could use, I've even seen people use backing, like Dacron backing. So, all right, so got the wire in. Here comes our shank. I'm gonna thread that on. Okay. Fold wire over. Form a nice little teardrop loop back there. And you can make this, you know, pretty small. Just enough for it to, to swing and pivot back there. And then cover this wire. Trim excess, gone. Cover, cover, cover. Okay, that's good. So you don't, again, don't have to glue that, don't have to fold it back over on itself. Um, there's no hook here in the back, so you're never really gonna be torquing on this thing, so it doesn't matter. All right, so from there, we're gonna go back to our chenille. We're gonna tie it right, right in front of that loop nice and close and then we're gonna stop you know not too far back from the eye and then we're gonna wrap this all the way forward to the thread so close touching wraps nice and tight should take 15 wraps 20 wraps okay keep going Right. Okay. If you wanted to keel this fly with some lead on the bend of the hook, you can, but since it's so small, um, just the weight of the bend itself uh, will keel this fly no problem, from what I found. So uh, let's do, that's good. We'll stop right there, catch that. Okay, that's in. And then we're gonna put in just a little bit of marabou for the peck fins. So you can do this, you know, a couple different ways, but I try to find a feather that's got a lot of the fluffier bottom stuff to it. Let me see if I can find a good one here. Nothing's, nothing's sticking out. That one's super long. We'll go with this one. So we've got our feather here. Um, two of them actually. So what we're gonna do is just sort of grab half of this thing. So like the bottom third. These are the real fluffy ones. So you just kind of clamp on those then pull the stem away from that. And that should give you a little cluster with even tips, fairly even tips. So that'll work for a fin. So you can kind of choke up on it, tie it in really, really close. If you got some stray ones, you can sort of pick them out. Whatever, it's fine. Okay, fin one. Fin one is in. Trim the excess. Okay, and then we'll do the same to the back. Pull the other side of that feather apart. Okay. So not great. Like I said, the woolly bugger marabou is a lot better for this just because the, the tips are stacked and they're more plush, but it doesn't matter. Okay, fin two going in on the, on the close side here. 
So that's what we're looking at. Just two basic, simple set of fins. Just something to allow that pulsating movement on the paws is really what we're after. So it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but that'll work fine. So now we come to the head and all that is is just four uh, chunks of laser dub uh, on the top and the bottom. So first one we'll do on top. And when you're working with this laser dub, remember to pull it apart a couple times and lay it back onto itself so all those individual fibers are running the same direction. Okay, so here's one of four. So we're gonna lay that sort of right on top, catch it right in the middle, right in the heart of it. Okay, so now we're gonna flip vise. We're gonna go over to our white, or whatever color you happen to be using. Same thing here, get these things going the right way, all parallel. Kind of thin it out. Okay, then I like to take this one tuft and sort of split it in half so you can fit it around the hook like so. Catch that. Okay, so that's two of four. Now we're gonna go up to the front and install two more tufts. We're gonna go to the top side with our yellow. Okay, thin it out. It doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, lay that right on, right on top. Okay, three of four, flip vise. Back to our white. I really like white laser dub. I buy it, I buy it by the pound. Okay, here's the white. in okay and then you're gonna sort of peel these tufts of dubbing back and get your thread right up front on the eye and then whip it right there there's one two thread gone Okay, and then you're gonna to wanna to spread all this dubbing out so it's kind of radiating out of the center. There's a cat fight going on outside right now. I just heard a bunch of cats screaming. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna put our eyes in and you can just use gel, super glue, Loctite, Zap-A-Gap, whatever you have. So this is, where, this is where the rotary vise comes into play so you can sort of pivot your flying you know, work at all angles. Um, it's not just for wrapping chenille or dubbing on the hook. Like you can just angle this thing differently and, and look at it from all angles, the top side, underside, all sides. So that's the main purpose of a rotary vise. So, um, all right, so we're gonna take the glue, just put a little bead of it here. And then we've got quarter inch super pearl 3D eyes. You can use any size you want, but the quarter inches are nice. Okay, that's on. And then we're gonna do the same to the back side. Just a little dab of glue. Okay. High number two. In. You can sort of take your scissors and put downward pressure on this on both of them. Okay, so for our last couple maneuvers here, all we're gonna do is take our long razor, razor scissors and just shape this. Two cuts, two cuts. So bottom, I like to do the bottom first for some reason. And sort of do like a 45, maybe less, some more right in there. And just give it one nice clean cut. It's 
sort of like that. That'll work. Same on the top. Okay, that bottom cut sucked. Clean it up a little bit. All right, so yeah, you're gonna have some excess stuff kind of sticking around, sticking around the eyes. And so you can just come in and sort of clean that up. Let's just kind of shape it and sculpt it. And then sort of that's what you're what you're left with, just a basic little swimmer, you know, just a simple little single hooked swimmer. Very, very fun to fish on a floating line or even an intermediate, but um, color is, is endless. You can do white, you know, white chenille with the olive top with a white stomach, uh, white with gray top, white bottom. Um, you could do this and change the yellow head to olive, whatever you want to do but uh, it's hard to beat yellow for, for smallmouth. Um, you know, no matter what the conditions, even low clear water yellow is good, but it's really good after a, you know, after a rain when the water's a little off color. So this thing's been a lot of fun to fish, very easy to cast. You can throw it on a, on a six weight, seven weight, eight weight, um, possibly even a five weight, I suppose, but that might be pushing it. But yeah, they're very fun to fish and um, yeah. Tie some of these up, let us know what you think, and if you haven't subscribed already, it really helps us out. So, thanks.